Hi everyone, my name is Maxime Chagnot. I'm a Katia consultant working for PLM Technology in Norway. Today we'll perform a live demonstration of the 3D Experience Release 20NX and today's video is the third part of the introduction to dynamic simulation and we will learn how we can make contact between different parts and how we can make group of contacts. So here's an example I have, it's a funnel uh, with four different or four balls that are the same exactly, but positioned in a different uh, height, as you can see here. And the idea is that we will run the simulation, let the ball fall in the funnel, and let's see how it goes. So as you can see here, we have the assembly uh, with the funnel and the four balls. But as you can see as well, there is no engineering connection. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is to create the fixed part and always bring the first fixed part first. And as you can see, this one will be the funnel. So we are in assembly design. I will just click on engineering connection and select the funnel and this part will become fixed. And that's the basically the only engineering connection we will have here. And then we will have the contact. So to add the contact, we need to switch to mechanical system design. I will click on the 3D again, search mech. And then now we have mechanical system design here. Here it is. And what we can do now is add the contact. So the first contract contact we will add will be the balls against the funnel. So we have group list one here. I just click on plus and select the funnel. Here it is. And now group two and select the four balls. One, two, three, and four. And here it is. And as you can see, now we have two group and I'm just going to check the restitution collision model and the surface contact model. And what we would like to have here would be to have a bit of restitution in order for the balls to just uh, smash each other and rebound. So I will not put one because one will be way too much. I will just put 0.2 and same for the friction. We don't want to be one. We don't want them to be sticky. We want them to be a bit sliding, but not too much neither. So I will also put here 0 0.2. Okay, we have everything we want for the contact. So now let's, it's time to make the contact between the different balls. And this is where you will see that uh, four balls is actually okay. But if you want to do the same exercise for 10 balls, then you will have a lot of contact to do. So I will just create the contact now. And this one would be with the first ball and the three other. So as you can see, ball one here, okay. And the other will be two, three, and four. We check the same restitution here and the result, it's okay. And let's continue with the other. So now it's ball number two, okay, with the rest. Here it is. Great. As you understood, we will do the same with the tree and the other. One, two, and four. Okay. Finish. And the last one, the ball number four with the tree other as well. One, two, and three. And here it is. Then we have done all the contact we need for the uh, assembly. As you can see, we have uh, five contacts, uh, the ball against the funnel and the ball against the ball together. So we can, of course, just verify that everything is done. Great. Okay, here it is. So the next step now is to create a mechanism. Okay. I will call it funnel and verify that all our connections are in the mechanism. It's okay. Of course, there is a lot of degrees of freedom. There is no problem. It's a dynamic simulation. The second step we need to do is to verify the weight. Okay, everything here, we can just uh, update again the weight. Remember, uh, when we don't put any material, it will use the density of the steel. So this weight might be quite huge, but for the if you want lighter uh, part, you can just add the material you want. But for this simulation, it should be okay. Uh, great, we can remove this weight definition 
And now we will switch to the mechanical system experience. So that's the last step. You can search make again. Here it is. We don't create the kinematic scenario. Okay, final simulation. And here it is, uh, you know, if you have watched the video part one and part two, you should know about how it works now. So we are just going to add a uh, gravity excitation in that case. Uh, of course, if you want to add a motor, you, it's no problem if you want to make this turn, for example, uh, that's no issue. We create now the dynamic scenario, selecting the gravity on the reference area. And again, I recommend to put a low uh, end time because then you will see the calculation time will be quite big. Okay, and here, here as well, I will not use this uh, solver, but I will use this simple, simplistic Euler. Uh, we did that in the part two. It's, I feel like it's slightly better when there is a restitution collision between the different parts, and that's the case here. Here it is. Uh, we have everything we need. Uh, let's just... Uh, run the scenario okay so you can see now we can just replay the results here it is okay we can see now it was a bit short uh, because we haven't finished uh, the ball are not falling completely so two seconds could be slightly better okay uh, what i like is of course with that mod uh, is that we can see the visualization in 3d and let's just switch the view to customize you in order to remove the wire axis and points okay and now you can just replay it again and if you want to have something smaller you can just reduce the time by two for example here you can see they are connecting and they are falling in the funnel and obviously as you can see here it's quite hard but um, it's depending on the diameter of this funnel so we'll play a bit with that as well okay uh, so what can we do uh, first of all we can change the scenario to two seconds because one second was a bit short. Okay, you can re replay it, for example. Okay, so as you can see, uh, it's quite fast to run this scenario. I just forwarded it in the video. Uh, we can replay the result again. Now we can see that uh, with two seconds, we can see the end of this scenario. We can see the ball falling in the pit. Okay, here it is. And what we can do now is we will switch a bit this uh, diameter. So uh, for the moment, the ball have a diameter of 18 millimeter, and I think the hole is about 22 millimeters. So if we reduce that, I guess the ball will be stuck here. And if we increase it, it should be faster to do. So let's play with that. Uh, go back, I just exit this mode. Okay, and let's switch back to the design where we will just open the funnel. Here it is, I will just play with that value. So if I put uh, 10 millimeter, in, uh, that, if I put 9.5, then we should have 19 millimeter. That's very narrow but still a possibility for the ball to fall. Okay, exit. Of course, you go back to the, to the assembly, to the mechanism. You can just update and rerun the scenario. So as you can see here, we have quite good result because that's exactly the, the problem we have. Uh, the hole is a bit narrow, so there is some balls that are managing to pass, especially the balls that are the lowest. As you can see, if we reduce that to 
very slow speed, we can see that that's this two ball were the lowest in the height and the two others are fighting to go in the hole and they are stuck here. So what we can just finish now is just I will exit that simulation and go back to my uh, funnel and edit that diameter and let's put something clearly way too big but it's okay. So it was 11 in radius before, let's put 13. So then we have 26 millimeter diameter, that's largely enough. Almost 14, so then we have 10 millimeter tolerance in the hole. Okay, so here we can see it's way, way bigger. And we can go back to our scenario update. And that's an easy way to verify a design, uh, go back and forth in the design step and going back to the dynamic simulation where we can play a bit with that. Uh, this is a, a simple example, but we can play with a lot more uh, things in uh, dynamic simulation, especially intermittent contact. Uh, you want to open a door with a mechanism. These kind of things are really easy to, to play with. I will try to provide a video in the future to just show different example we can do with dynamic simulation. Okay, so, okay, let's put ten, two seconds. That should be okay. Uh, let's run the simulation again. Actually, I will, I will go back to one second because the hole is pretty big, so I know it's going to fall quite fast. One second, run the scenario. And here it is. Yeah, as you can see, that was very quick. Uh, we can, of course, replay that scenario again. And we can see clearly that the hole is bigger, so it's much easier for the ball to fall. So uh, that was it for today. I hope you learned a bit more about dynamic simulation. Uh, don't hesitate to watch the other video to ex explain you also friction coefficient and restitution uh, between the parts. Um, I will try to, as I said, I will try to provide a video in the future to show different examples we can do with dynamic simulation. So just keep updated on the YouTube uh, channel. Uh, subscribe if you want to. And I hope this video was uh, quite helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.